the art room for me was like another expansive world where possibilities seemed endless. The whole school concept didn't make much sense to me in first grade. Somehow having to sit in rows of desks for most of the day, it just seemed artificial and contrived. But when I entered the art room, my senses, curiosity, and my imagination were ignited, and I was eager to delve into whatever projects Mr. Hodge had arranged for us. Each art class felt like an expedition into new ideas and materials and tools. We got to make decisions on our own and to see where those decisions led. We learned that a problem or a situation can be solved or looked at in many different ways. And of course, this helped to develop more flexible thinking and certainly to celebrate uh, differences. I gained an increased sense of confidence and I began to take responsibility for my own learning. I like the feedback, I like the, res the response that uh, the, the kids have. Uh, they're all postmodern, by the way, in, in terms of artistic times, and I wouldn't have it any other way. I was working on my master's degree at Iowa, and there was this notice by the drinking fountain, as usual, and it, and it talked about an opening that that's where it all said. I had never been in Wisconsin before. I could do anything I wanted. And uh, so I was free to take pictures. I was free to find things. Uh, student teachers, I'd always pick their brains because they were always way ahead of me anyway. And so it, it, was, a, it was great. Streets of Oshkosh, a lot of it. Uh, memorabilia, uh, furniture, uh, and my dad's sled was in there. In fact, my baby bed was in there. What I wanted the kids to see was something they wouldn't see anywhere else. So that when they look at it, they have to study it and, and really try to define it. They, I wouldn't say anything, and then pretty soon they're Looking up, you know, I said, Mary Poppins parking lot. <laughs> and it was the perfect uh, response, I guess, because <laughs> that's what it's saying. Make a drawing and put it under a piece of glass. And then just using tempered paint, you start with the lightest color and then rub the paper on it, wash it off, come back and put until you build up these layers of, of color. And I thought that was kind of fun, for me anyway. <laughs> and the, the one child is just amazing. Every detail smoothed the elephant out and made the ears, and it was just a, 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 an anatomical model. The other little girl just kind of slapped these things together, and it had texture, and the, everything was kind of crooked and backwards. And, I thought, now this is, this is what you have to think about. Which kid would you give an A to? And I would have to say that'd be a tough decision, but I still like to go with the kid with a flamboyant style. So when I had an exhibit every year, I would put everybody's work in no matter what. And that was the most exciting part of it, was you go from first grade to second grade to ninth grade, to back and forth, you know. It was not projects for seventh graders all day long, you know, it was, it was a variety. Culminated in just one Mark Chagall. And I love the storytelling that goes on in all of these. They're whimsical and beautiful and, and uh, imaginative. I 
saw Seinberg in the New Yorker cartoons, Escher, and it's always part of whatever I did at campus school is drawing. And everything began with a drawing, and, uh, and the drawings in themselves became the artwork itself. I like folk music. Uh, I've never, I never quite understood folk music till I moved to Wisconsin. And I can understand the words. I enjoy the stories. And again, it's like Chagall. It, it, it's something about life. It, it's not the kind of noise sometimes that I can't understand. I have mm -hmm. a lot of vinyl, by the way. <laughs> And uh, James Thurber was one of the, again, a great storyteller with a lot of humor. The classroom teacher was really the art teacher a lot. And uh, these things, uh, that's why the book became popular. My classroom teachers buying the books rather than needing the books rather than art teachers needing the books. It, it can be an artist teacher or a teacher artist. And so I wanted to be the artist teacher. That it was up to me to be a painter and to express my ideas. And so I had a basic understanding of of what I was trying to do. And he had a book that he published and one of my pieces of art, the, the a linoleum block print was in the book. Oh yes, he said, um, I used to take that print around when he would do like these uh, exhibits, but one time, it was stolen, and it was the only piece of art in the whole exhibit that was stolen. I thought it was pretty good because he put it in his book, and then somebody else must have liked it because it was stolen. Because he was an amazing teacher, and he taught he taught um, he taught me how to believe in myself. Yeah. So one of the things I made, I remember, was a. Um, he had us make plaster sculptures, and he actually liked my plaster sculpture because it was different on all sides, and I was very proud of that. I do remember the, uh, the famous David Hodge photograph with the Volkswagen VW bus, and I, I was the one uh, sitting on top of the cab of the bus when he took the picture. But, but Dr. Hodge was always uh, very easygoing. That was quite different than our first art teacher who was more of an authoritarian, scary figure. And David Hodge was always a friend to all the kids and uh, made art class fun, even if he had only limited skill. I, I only have like great memories of his, uh, again, sort of gentleness and uh, positive um, teaching uh, and, and really making everybody feel, whether you knew it or not, that you had some artistic uh, soul. For many people that had him, and including me, has been uh, something that I, you know, that I remembered my entire life and still do. And it's just really great. He's a remarkable teacher. Uh, he's one of only a few teachers, I think, in my lifetime that I really remember. He was a big influence. I continued on with art in, in, in high school and I do it on my own spare time ever since. And I'd like to thank David for being there when I was ready to open my world up to other things. We knocked a, a baseball through his window and on the weekend when we were playing outside the school and everyone ran away but me. And he looked out and said, Tarn, did you throw that baseball? I said, I didn't throw it, but I was part of the group. And he said, don't worry, go on home. <laughs> but I remember one time I was outside, I think in the summer with a friend, some of my schoolmates and we were playing outside under the art department. He came up and said, come on up. And we did a 
a quick art class <laughs> in the middle of summer that was kind of impromptu. So that was David. He always enjoyed showing his talent and encouraging all of us. I want to thank you for what you provided me all those years at campus as our art teacher. I thank you and God bless you. And while I never was good with the hand drawing or sculpture, I did get into photography. I've taken hundreds of thousands of pictures and I do give credit for my eye for photography to Dave Hodge because I think he taught us how to look at things in a creative way. Classes, we made a moon for a school dance. It's this great big box, probably five feet square and cut a big round circle in it and put lights behind it and we treated the paper to make it look kind of opaque and that's my memory of art class. He'd find art in anything. I'm not the least bit artistic, but he could find it in anything he saw alongside the road or anywhere. He'd... Art class was taking, making a potato paper mache sculpture and I ended up making a raccoon because that's what I thought the uh, potato looked like. Uh, I will say I still have that raccoon today. Sometimes. One time he did this exercise in which he took a slide and projected it onto a model, a person sitting on the table. And we had to draw not the person, but the spider web projected onto that person's body. Um, that was a difficult exercise. <laughs> you never knew what was going to be coming up next. Was very innovative and very good at um, allowing people with little or no skill like me to feel like we were actually making art. That I think turned out to be kind of a positive thing for me over the years as I developed an interest in photography and design. And um, uh, one of the key tenets of Dave's teaching was what he called contour drawing, where a student would put a pencil on the paper and then look at the item they were going to be drawing, but never look back down at the paper. And I recall uh, drawing something in that, using that technique and finding that my pencil had left the paper uh, several minutes before and I had drawn on the table. Doing work that was subpar, so that was, that was a good thing. And honestly, in, in uh, elementary and middle school education, uh, there's a lot of grading and judging that goes on, and uh, it's nice to have an environment where none of that really seemed to be in play. So one of the um, exercises that he had us do that I remember really loving was we made stained glass pictures, and we took a piece of glass, and he had all these shards of glass, and we drew a painting with black paint on our piece of glass and then we glued pieces of colored glass to make a mosaic. And Mr. Hodge treated everybody in the class as if they were an artist. There were no good artists and bad artists. It was a very egalitarian environment and very free and we were all encouraged to explore. Thank you, Mr. Hodge, for everything. Look at this incredible still life on the, I guess, west wall of the classroom that changed, you know, every week or two. We got to learn how to do contour drawing. We got to see the world and see our environment in new and different ways. It was magical and it was fun and it was stimulating and uh, it and nurturing, and we could all feel how much Mr. Hodge loved what he was doing and loved us and loved to see us blossom and grow. You know whether we had any true artistic talent or not. I just want to thank Mr. Hodge, my, who is now my friend Dave Hodge, for inspiration for helping me learn how to look at the world and look at my immediate environment in fresh ways and to look for you know the the art and the creativity in in everything 
around me and around us. It's, it's, it's a true gift. And he had this enormous trust in the kids because uh, he would let us do anything um, to the point where I think I remember him almost burning the building down once because he had some uh, clay models in the kiln overnight and some, somehow that started the building on fire. Just reminds me of what a great um, lover of kids he was. He, he knew his students and he just loved having us there and letting us be creative. We, I remember, I'm an engineer, I'm retired as an engineer, and yet in grade school he had us learning perspective and I ran across some perspective drawings that David Hodge had us doing in early elementary school years and I'm thinking wow he really he assumed that kids could do that kind of stuff and that was remarkable he just uh, he was a very daring wonderful guy that and it was worked for a lot of museums and stuff but you really made an impression on me I loved your class it was like Wearing patches and eyeglasses and lazy eye, I could soar in your class. And you taught me so many different ways. And when I look at all the work that your students had done, I'm amazed. And, I, and we used to sit around and we talk a lot about um, Twilight Zone. And that was the conversation, especially between Jim Boris and I. We tried to do that. and. Um, and it's just great. So thank you so much. I really enjoyed you. I'm sorry I missed you. If you're here, I'll show you a little bit of, I did a lot of fi figure drawing. I was good figure drawing and I did some illustration later on, but I did go into museum and gallery work for a long time. Galen Stone, who was the Dean of Art at Concordia, wow, what are you gonna do with these things? Because it's true. As far as our university is concerned, the next teacher comes along, has another philosophy, and anything before that is, is gone. And it is now in Concordia University's art education studio. And so I, I'm, yes, I'm glad you asked that question, because that's really important. And if anybody ever gets to Mequon, that that's the place that we might want to reminisce. I remember you saying proudly that all of your best Facebook friends are your first graders. Right. And they're still your friends. They are. There's about over 200 of them on that. And it is just amazing to me. I, as I say, I love the line. I knew them all as first graders. <laughs> <laughs> the, all I can say really is I'm so proud of them and the work that they did. That they were an inspiration if I was an inspiration, they were even more inspiring to me. This is a mural that was made mattress boards, uh, containers. So it's six feet high and 12 feet long. Students on my old 64 Falcon bus and this was quite an inspiration. What I did was I took this slide and I projected it onto these, this big bunch of cardboard, big surface, and they traced it with chalk, everything they, they could trace. And then I cut it all up into pieces, like a puzzle and just handed it out. They're just pieces of things. And so that's how this thing has come t together uh, here. And, but you can actually see the characters coming through this crazy uh, collage. I'd say Mr. Hodge's wonderful open-ended teaching techniques helped me to take agency of my own life and my own learning. I also 
learned that I can take charge of my own life and of my own learning at any age.